Hey guys, welcome back to the final video of the Ultimate Stebic course. Throughout the course, we've discussed all of Stebic's controls in the top bar, all the sliders in the sequencer, and all the options we have under MIDI play. Now it's time we focus on the automation page. This page allows us to link controls from our synth or our sampler to be directly accessible inside Stepic. This feature is very cool because we can use those controls in time with our sequence. Each pattern has a total of eight different automation lanes. Each automation lane has the usual 16 steps with values ranging from zero to 127. What's really cool is that each automation lane can have its own step length and its own clock speed. This allows us to have very dynamic and an endless evolving range of automation in our sequences. So let's get started. To get to our automation page, we just have to click on the automation button that's right next to the sequencer button. And here we're presented with eight individual automation lanes that are labeled one through eight on the left-hand side and these will all be off by default. So let's go ahead and turn on the first automation lane by simply clicking on the lane number. Now all these sliders will become active and function just like the other sliders in Stepic. We can randomize them, we can turn them off, we can hold down shift and move for on the fly motion like that, or we can right click and move these all at once, or even use our mouse wheel and scroll and move them like that. On the right hand side in the master section of each automation lane, we can randomize them here with the left click, or we can right click these for typical automation shapes. We can reset them here as well, and then we can move them left, we can move them right, up and down. And over here, we can change the clock speed for the individual automation lanes, which is really, really cool. And we also have a custom mode here at the bottom in case you wanna set a custom clock speed. Directly above these buttons, we have the step length control, as well as the min and max knobs, so we can set a specific range we want our sliders to stay in. Okay, so how do we bring the parameters of our synth or our sampler into Stepic? We can do this a couple of different ways, the first of which being MIDI Learn. On the right-hand side of every automation lane, we see an area where we can enter a CC number. Here we can choose what number that we would like. Zero will be off and we have one through 127 available to us. So for here, let's choose a number of 15. And once we have a number that is not zero, we see a button appear to the right called ping. So once we click this, we have 20 seconds to assign a parameter in our synth or our sampler via MIDI Learn. So here in Hive, we select the gear icon to open up MIDI Learn. And while this ping is still active, we just have to click on the parameter that we want. In this case, let's choose filter one cutoff. And once the control wiggles, it has been mapped. And it's important to know that once an automation lane is mapped to a CC number, that mapping will be applied to all patterns. So now we can turn off ping and try out by randomizing the automation lane by clicking on this yellow dice here. And let's take a listen. Now the ranges we get might be a little bit too much, so let's dial in a more appropriate range using the min and max knobs. Something like that might work a little bit better, and keep in mind, these knobs work with the individual slider values as well as the randomization. If we like the balance of our sliders but want to fine tune them a little bit, this is where the arrows can be helpful. We can left click for increments of 10 or we can right click for increments of 1, so let's go ahead and do a little bit of fine tuning. And we can even slow down the movement of this automation to one over eight in the sequencer menu right over here. Let's take a listen to see how that sounds. So now let's map the resonance on lane two and make something rhythmical. So now that we have this mapped here, we can bring some of these up here so we have a little bit of a resonance. And what we can do is we can set these sliders at 100 for a few steps. So in this case, I'm going to set the first one to 100, the fifth one also to 100, the ninth one as well to 100, and then maybe the 11th and the 13th, something kind of like that. They don't have to be exactly 100, but pretty close to it, something like that. And let's take a listen to see how this sounds. And maybe we want to speed this up a little bit here, so let's go over to the sequencer and maybe see what it sounds like with 1 over 32.
So it's a good thing to say organize. So let's label the parameters that we've mapped so far. So this first one here was the cutoff. So let's put F1 cutoff. And then this one here is going to be F1 resonance. So now we have two automation lanes that we like, and we can make this a little more interesting if we bring the length of the resonance down to 10 steps and enable retrigger on the left-hand side of the automation lane. So retrigger in this case works by restarting our resonance automation lane after each bar completes. And because our pattern consists of only one bar, it will restart every time the pattern completes. We spoke earlier in the course about retrigger when we're covering the sequencer. So if you'd like to know more about that, the links are in the video description below. Directly to the right of the max knob, we see a knob called def. This is for setting a default value when the automation track is turned off. Def can be useful if we're switching patterns and we want to set a default value of that parameter for that pattern. So let's copy pattern one to pattern two by hitting store and then going to pattern two. And then now here for the conduct, let's go ahead and turn this off and then set a default value maybe somewhere around here and take a listen while we switch patterns manually. As we switch to pattern two, the cutoff stayed at the default value that we set here on the def control. If we want to export the automation that we've just programmed, just below the ping button, we have a drag and drop option to export the automation. And we can also mute our automation if we'd like to hear our sequence without the automation by simply clicking the M right above the first automation lane. So let's go ahead and take a listen to that. If we ever wanted to copy any of these automation lanes to another lane or another lane in a different pattern, we can do this via the quick copy button located directly underneath the automation lane number. Left clicking will copy to and right clicking will copy from. When we click on quick copy, we see a grid. Horizontally at the top, pattern is written and it goes to 16, corresponding to all 16 patterns available in Stepic. Vertically on the left hand side, it says automation track and it goes to eight, corresponding to all automation tracks that we have. And the yellow dot we see in the grid tells us the currently selected position. To copy across patterns and automation lanes, all we have to do is select the box or the boxes we want and hit copy. So let's copy pattern one's first automation lane to the third automation lane in the same pattern. So we're staying in the same pattern for this example and we selected the first one, we just go down to the automation track here, select the third box and then hit copy and then boom, there it is. So now let's copy pattern one's second automation track to pattern five's eighth automation track. So we navigate to the fifth pattern here and we wanna do the eighth automation track which is all the way down here, select this box here and hit copy and we can see that on the fifth pattern, this has been copied. And finally, let's say we want to copy pattern one's first automation track to all patterns except 15 and 16. So we're going to go back to the first pattern and we go to the copy. Now we don't have to select each individual pattern here. What we can do is select the first number here and then deselect 15 and 16 and then hit copy. And then we can see that all of these here will have the same automation track. And this also goes vertically as well if we want to do it that way. Another way we can map controls in Stepic is by using the MIDI device manager located in the top bar of Stepic. Any entries that we make here are directly available to us in the automation page. If we take a quick look here at Hive, I've made a list here of stuff that I would like to use. So we have the filter one cutoff, the filter one resonance, distortion amount, oscillator one sub volume, and delay dry wet mix. And these are corresponding to controllers 15, 16, 17, 18, and 19. So back here in Stebic, the only last two that I didn't add were 18 and 19, which this is going to be the OSC 1 sublevel. And then for 19, we're going to be using the delay dry wet. If we make a map like this in Stebic's device manager, then I don't have to use MIDI learn every single time. I only have to do this process once. The MIDI device manager is great to use for synths that don't support MIDI learn or have a fixed MIDI map like a hardware synthesizer, for example. And for those hardware synthesizers, you could probably get the MIDI mapping information from the synth manual or from the manufacturer's website. 
So now that we have all that set up, let's navigate to the automation page and select our MIDI map that we just made. So here in the automation page, let's turn one, two, and three on for now. And where it says select a MIDI device, let's go ahead and click that and we see Hive 2 available to us. Now we click these three little dots and we can see all the parameters are available to us. So let's select the filter cutoff for the first lane. But let's say we want to add something quickly like oscillator one pan, for example. We can quickly use MIDI learn, rename our parameter in Stepic and hit save. And then now we'll have oscillator one's pan mapped and saved. So let's go ahead and do that. So on the sixth automation link, let's go ahead and turn this on. And for the controller mount, let's hit 20 because that'll just kind of keep us in line here. And then we hit ping and let's go over here to hive. And let's go to the MIDI learn and we want the oscillator one's pan. Let's go ahead and select that. And now it will turn and wiggle so it's mapped. Now back here in Stepic, we can rename this as OSC1 Pan. And then here on the save, let's go ahead and click save. So now we see on this list here, we have this here at the bottom and it's OSC1 Pan. So we're jumping out of FL Studio for just a moment to take a look at how this works in Ableton Live because the functionality is a little bit different. Stepic is available in two different versions, a VST3 and an audio units version, which we've used so far, and a Max for Live version specifically designed for use in Ableton Live. All the features we have discussed in the course are identical in both versions. However, the Max for Live version offers automation functions exclusive to Ableton Live, which we'll now explore. As a Max for Live device, Stepic can directly access and automate various live parameters through the Live API. This includes all live stock devices like synthesizers and parameters within Live itself, such as effects ends. Okay, so we're here in Ableton Live. Let's take a look here at what's going on. So we have Stepic loaded as a MIDI effect on a track here, and that's gonna be going into Hive, which we've been using the whole time. So let's take a look at that real quick. So we got our Hive, and then let's close our window real quick, and then we're going into a delay. Let's turn this on here, and then we're going into a reverb. And the nice part about this is that the setup is already basically done for us. So what we can do now is let's load up Stepic real quick, and let's take a listen to our track. Let's take a look at how MIDI mapping works in Ableton Live. So let's go ahead and select the automation track. Let's turn this automation lane on. And where it says Live, let's go ahead and select that. And now it says MIDI. So now we can add the MIDI CC controller number that we want, kind of like how we did in the previous videos. And let's ping a controller here real quick. So we select ping and let's go back over to Hive and then go to the gear icon for the MIDI learn. And let's map the cutoff to this parameter here and then close out the window. And let's check out Stepic and turn off the ping and press play. And we can see that it is now mapped. So you might be wondering why the MIDI CC mode is needed in the Max for Live version at all. So for instance, when you want to automate parameters of an external hardware, or you want to export automations to the timeline or MIDI clips using the drag and drop method. This only works with MIDI CC and not with the live automations. If you want to automate parameters of a third party plugin using the live mapping mode, they first need to be made visible to live or exposed. To do this, go to the plugin and enter the configuration mode, turning the switch green. Then select the parameters you want to automate with a mouse in the plugin window. As soon as the parameter is touched, it is added to the plugin's parameter list. Now switch to Stepic and activate the live mapping mode using the blue map button. While the mapping mode is active, select the desired parameter in the plugin's parameter list. Successful mapping is confirmed by displaying the parameter information in the automation sequencer. Okay, now let's map some live parameters inside Stepic. Let's select the third automation track and on the right hand side, let's select map and let's go down to the delay and select on the filter frequency. And once we select that, it turns gray. And then now we see it on the right hand side in Stepic. Now let's turn on the fourth automation lane. And for this one, let's select map again. And for this parameter, let's select the dry wet on the reverb. And then we can see it on the right hand side. And let's take a listen. The parameter of an existing mapping can be changed in the exact same way. Simply reactivate the mapping mode and select the desired parameter. 
This also works while the transport is running. This way you can experiment and see which parameter is particularly well suited for automation. An existing mapping can be deleted using the red Dell button. After deletion, the parameter information is going to be reset, the text field is going to be cleared, and the mapped parameter is released again, so basically it's not going to be gray anymore and it's going to be in its original color. One thing to keep in mind is that while the transport is running, the automation modes cannot be switched between live and MIDI. What you need to do is stop the transport and then switch to the desired mode that you want to use. And now that our transport is stopped, we can freely change the different modes that we want to. So now let's do some drag and drop MIDI CC export. And keep in mind that exporting automations is only possible when the automation sequencers are running in the MIDI mode. So now we can drag and drop this onto our track. And we can bypass Stepic and take a listen. So now let's hop back into FL Studio and take a listen with everything that we've learned so far. All right, let's make something really cool in Stepic. The more automation lanes we start adding in the automation page, the more important the min and max ranges become, because with those knobs, we can keep our sequence from not getting too out of control. So this concludes the ultimate Stepic tutorial course. We hope you now understand Stepic much better and can see how powerful Stepic can be in music production. If you have any additional questions about Stepic, please let us know in the comments or join the official Device Maista Discord with the link in the video description below. And as always, thank you so much for watching. Hope you learned something and have a great time using Stepic.